guys I am back again all right and uh, of course I have to do ministry out of my vehicle <laughs> right now because uh, we don't have electricity so I have to charge of everything in this vehicle and uh, hope that everything is going well so all I need to know right now is if you guys can hear me all right so let me just pull up my Mm. Okay, YouTube to see if I'm getting any comments and that uh, you guys can confirm that you are hearing me. So let's see. Here we go. Okay. Come on, go I can hear you. Okay. Thank you, Tessa Hall. All right. I see. You can hear me. Okay, beautiful. Good. All right. Now, this particular teaching is titled false prophet, prophet versus uh, true prophet and thank you everyone that has been checking in on me I'm a little scruffy here but of course when you ain't got no power you gotta do uh, <laughs> what you can do all right hmm? but, but you gotta check for me just check for the for the message all right now, I got an email from a lady today uh, from I think it's Trinidad and she told me about a story, a story of course, where she had an encounter with a prophet. Now, prior to the encounter with the prophet, uh, she was talking about a, a relationship that she had ended, and uh, she believed there was a little soul tie going on there that she had to deal with, and then there was some other uh, body body sickness that she was dealing with. But anyway, when she met this prophet. The prophet actually told her, I see there's a soul tie issue you need to deal with. You need to bring that to an end. And also there's a there's a, a sickness going on with a part of your body, which was all true. But then he said to her that she needed to, and I wouldn't say exactly what it is that he told her to do, but what he told her to do was to mix a particular concoction and drink it. She said to me in the email that she did not follow his advice in terms of what he said to do afterwards because she wanted to clear it with me to see if it was, you know, if it was right. What was my thoughts on it? So immediately, immediately when she, 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 she mentioned the part of what he said in terms of a remedy for her, I knew right away it was not of God. I knew right away he, he was not a prophet of God. Now that's a heavy statement to make because most people that hear a prophet prophesy and what he says is accurate to them, they determine from that point forward that that particular prophet is of God. Because in their mind, how could he be so accurate with what he's telling me if he is not from God? Well, that's a beautiful, beautiful question because now we're going to go to the scriptures. You see, you know how I am, the scripture guy. Let's go to the scriptures and let's see what the scripture have to say. All right. And I'm going to tell you from the onset, because I wrote a very lengthy email giving a myriad of scriptures, but also breaking down those scriptures so that she would have an understanding like I'm about to do with you right now. Many people have prophesied to you. I was a victim of this. And this is why I'm so much against it. And that's why I teach so much about it. There are many people out there who truly have the gift of prophecy, who truly God has given the ability to see in the spiritual realm as it relates to the lives of others. They have this gift, but a lot of them have polluted their gifts for whatever reason, primarily for monetary gain. And now they begin to, yes, the, prof, the gift is not going to diminish or not work because they're operating outside of God. They still have the gift. But now, because they're using it from a demonic perspective, the gift is now polluted. So yes, they, the prophecy would be true. But what they're asking you to do, unknowing to you, is going to cause you to now forge covenants with the kingdom of darkness that's now going to introduce a greater evil into your life. Okay? Now, let's look at the scripture. I love the scriptures, man. I don't know about you. 
I love the scriptures. And when she, when I read her email, my mind went straight to this particular scripture. So I want you to turn with me to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 13, okay? And we're gonna read from verse one to verse five. Deut Deuteronomy chapter 13, and we're gonna read from verse one to verse five. Okay, but let's be clear. If a person prophesies to you and their prophecy was accurate, I mean to the T, to the letter, all right? That does not mean it is a prophet from God. Let's be clear. Let's be crystal clear. Because there are other factors that we need to now observe after the prophecy, even though it came to pass, as it relates to that person, to make a final, uh, make a conclusion on who they are. All right? So Deuteronomy chapter 13, and again, we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 5. Okay, I'm going to take my time. And I'm going to explain as I read. Verse 1 says of Deuteronomy 13, If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, verse 2, and the sign or the wonder come to pass. So what they said, or they gave a particular sign, God said, X, Y, Z, and boom, X, Y, Z happened. He says, And the sign or the wonder came to pass, wherefore he spoke unto thee, saying, listen to this carefully now, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. So, let me explain to you what he's saying so far. He says, If a person comes to you, a prophet or a dreamer, and the prophet says, tomorrow at this time, the poverty you see today, you will see no more. And guess what happened? Tomorrow, the same time, somebody came and blessed someone with a million dollars. So for you, you're like, my God, oh, this, this, this is a man of God. I mean, you're just totally taken in awe by him because what he said come to pass. But let's look at what the scripture is saying, though. The scripture now is saying here, and it put emphasis on verse 2. It says, even though his wonder or his sign came to pass, follow up on what he's saying afterwards. For example, some may say to you, X, Y, Z is the case. And God is showing me someone that's working sorcery in your life. God is showing me where you try to apply for different jobs and everyone turn you down. I see where your family is coming against you. I see where there's major conflict on the job. But the Lord is telling me that this is witchcraft causing this. And guess what? He's true. It is, it's a, he is as true as true can be because you, you know this. You're living it. You know. But then he says to you, I need you to go get two, two eggs. And I need you to go to the beach at 12 o'clock at night. And I need you to bury these two eggs in the sand. And I need you to draw a circle around it. And I need you to do a happy dance and then do a happy face and walk backward when you leave. So this is what the scripture is saying now. The scripture says, now if he's, let's just read verse two. And the sign or the wonder came to pass or the prophecy what he said came to pass. Wherefore he spake unto you, saying, now he's saying to you, let us go after other gods. But you say, well, Kevin, he didn't tell us let's go after other gods after that. So I think you're wrong. No, 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 no. You're still missing it. He's getting you to engage in a ritual that's going to cause you, unknowing to you, to forge a covenant with the altar that he is serving. See, you all ain't hearing me. You all ain't hearing me. You see, you know I can break it down for you. You know I can break it down for you. It's the same thing when he said to you, that, that if, if you believe what I'm saying to you, just the prophet now, or let's say the, 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 the prophecy came to pass, and he came to you and he said, the Lord is saying that you must now sow into my life a thousand dollars. Which scripture is this, sir? Which scripture is this? The Lord is saying to me that give your best seed to me now that you see the hand of the Lord upon your life. Ah, get out of here, you, you crook. 
So let's read it. Let's read it. I love this. I love it. Verse 2 says, let's stop with verse 1 again. Deuteronomy 13. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder, they declared something or they produced something. Verse 2 say, and the sign or the wonder came to pass, meaning what they said was correct. What they prophesied was true. What they dreamt about you was on T. It was on target. But the scriptures say, don't, don't use that as the only evidence to determine that they are men and women of God. No, 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 no. He said, now continue to read the biblical principles that I've put in place so that you can make a sound judgment on who they really are, even though the prophecy was for real. I can nail this today. See, this is what the storm do. This is after the storm, okay? This is the whooping after the storm, okay? Verse 2 says, And the sign of the wonder came to pass. Wherefore he spake unto you, or whatever he said came to pass. The scripture says, where, the scripture says, let us, he says, now let us go after other gods. He says, if he says, let us go after other God which thou hast not known. Hold on. Okay, you just gave me a prophecy. The prophecy come to pass. So why are you asking me to take, uh, what's the thing now, Florida water and, and pour it to my doorstep? Why are you asking me to go to the graveyard and get graveyard dust and sprinkle it so and so? Why are you asking me to wear a black string around my arm? What, what does that have to do with the prophecy? So what is he doing? He didn't come out and say, let's go after other gods. No, 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 no. But his action is directing you to another god. His words in terms of him saying, okay, God says, sow a seed to this. And I'm not saying that all that says that isn't true. But what I'm saying to you is, let's look at the scripture for an example. Let's look at the scripture as a, 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 a pattern to see what he or she is following. So he's saying now, yeah, the prophecy came true. Now he's saying now, the Lord says now, you need to bring an offering to my altar. Your altar. What do you mean your altar? What altar you have? So this is how, now it isn't to say that he doesn't have the gift. You all remember the guy, Balak and Balaam? Balak was the king of the Moabites. Balaam was who? Balaam used to be a prophet of God. But just like many other prophets, okay, they decide to use their gift to bamboozle and to manipulate others for monetary gain. But the things that he said came to pass, they were true. But at the end of his prophecies, he now asks you to do stuff that is contrary to God. Now, before I go any further, let me just give you some advice now. Because I know a lot of you can relate to what I'm saying. This very moment, we're not going to go any further. This very moment right now. Father God, I repent of any false prophet that I have allowed to put their hand on me, that I have allowed to point their finger in the crowd at me and prophesy over my life when the truth is they were not of you or they were under a curse or they were polluted. Lord, whatever was transferred from them to me, whatever I came in agreement with when I accepted their prophecy, whether it was true or not, but the vessel in which it was coming from was polluted. Father, I renounce, I repent, I pray that you relinquish me from whatever spiritual chains or cords that I have tied myself to as it relates to receiving that prophecy. See folks, what people don't understand is when you receive a prophecy, you're coming in agreement with that prophet and whatever kingdom or altar he or she serves. That's why I say to you, don't take what they said that came to pass as the final, or the final say that this is of God. No, man, that's not what I'm reading. Now watch this. Watch what the scripture says here, right? I mean, I just find this to be so fascinating. It says that even if his prophecy comes to pass, but he says, 
Let's go serve another God. He said, uh-uh. No. No. No, 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 no. So this is what I'm saying to you. If, if, and I always tell you this, if they cannot bring the scripture to support what they're advising you to do, then you should at that very moment, yeah, the prophecy is true. Yeah, which is, but I, I, read, I, I cancel whatever agreement spiritually between you and I right now, Mr. Prophet. You don't got to say it loud if you don't want to. I mean, you could, but you could say it right in your heart. But I tell you all the time, even if you come to my service, and if Kevin Ewing teaching, preaching, or prophesying to you, say in your heart before you even enter Kevin's service, Father, if what Kevin Ewing have to say is of you, if you really send him here to speak a word, then I receive of that word. If Kevin Ewing is not of you, if Kevin is possessed by a devil, if Kevin is motivated by whatever else to preach me happy, I reject, I renounce, or whatever it is that he is dealing with, I refuse to be a part of it. Lord, release me from whatever spiritual captivity that he may be trying to impose upon my life. Now, I ain't telling you that for me. So you should judge everybody the same way. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you call yourself. That's what Kevin does. Whatever service I go to, even friends of mine, because everyone could sway off in the flesh at any point. And I don't put anybody above my God. So the only person I have my complete confidence in is my God. That don't mean I don't like my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. What I make clear to me is that the only person I put my complete trust in is God Almighty, His Son, Jesus Christ. And it's no, it's no, it's no shade to prophets and preachers and apostles. Now, if they take it as shade, then I guess you're one of the persons I'm person talking about. <laughs> but nevertheless, clear you. Clear the spiritual clutter when you go into these places. Set the stage that whatever demon running up in here, it ain't coming over here. So no matter, don't don't be so gung ho by a particular preacher or teacher. Or, and I always use myself. Don't be so gung ho by me. Oh, Kevin is a great teacher. That's beautiful. That's his gift. Okay, fine. But Kevin ain't God. Okay, Kevin's subject to mistake. Kevin's subject to error, like anybody else. So to 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 be safe. On your end and Kevin end, do exactly what I tell you. Father, yeah, I pray for the grace on Kevin's life. I pray that you continually be with him. But at the same time, God, I cover myself too. So if Kevin talking nonsense, Kevin up here talking fool, and Kevin up here telling people go do this and do that, Father, if that ain't of you, then I reject it. Oh, yeah. I, I remember a story one time. I think I told you about this before. Uh, this, this pastor... Try to get this kind of holding this in my hand, so you got to bear with me here. <laughs> this pastor came to the island one time, and he said he was preaching. He was an African pastor. This is what was told to me, and he told the crowd if anyone in there have enemies. But of course, everybody placed their hand up. So he said, "Let me tell you how to deal with your enemies." Now this is the pastor now. He said, "When you leave this building tonight." You find the biggest stone that you can hold in your hand. And you get a marker. And you write your enemy's or enemy name on that stone. And when you get to the nearest body of water, you throw that stone in the water. This sounds like witchcraft to me. This sounds like sorcery. This sounds like a ritual to conjure up a water spirit. That's how it sounded to me. See, but what happened, a lot of people are going to buy into that because all they're thinking, this is the man of God. That's how they're thinking. So right there, by labeling him as the man of God, they automatically assume that he would never tell them nothing that is evil or wrong. Not Kevin. But he, in my book, everybody is guilty until proven innocent when I'm dealing with people because I've met too many fakes. This is why I say to you, don't put your trust in me. Don't put your trust in your pastor, your apostle. Put your trust in God. God, I love my pastor. I love my apostle. I love them. But they have feelings. They have emotions. They Some days they're up, some days they're down. I mean, that don't diminish their gifts, but they're human. So to protect me and to cause me not to be spiritually vulnerable, then I say off the bat, Father, if... If Pastor Amos over here today, whom I love, 
is preaching from his flesh and prophesying from his flesh or he trying to raise some money for the church wing so he figure by prophesying people can give father i reject i renounce i denounce myself my spirit my soul my being from whatever he is saying or she is saying that is not of you yeah man so let's go back to the scripture because there's more nuggets in this so the scripture says here we're going to start from verse 1 again of Deuteronomy 13 if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder come to pass you hear what he says it ain't nothing gonna come to pass it's coming to pass more than likely they are true prophets they are called by God to do these things but it does not mean that they cannot be polluted it does not mean that they cannot use it for demonic services there are many people who do tarot card reading and and uh, what's the next thing psychics most of them are true prophets who just like Balaam decided not to use it for the glory of God it's the same person it's the same like a person who God gave the gift of singing of course ultimately it was for his glory but they decided to use it to sing secular music all their life so it's the same thing it's no different there's no difference here the only difference is here it's just a different type of gift all right so the scripture says here and the sign of the wonder come to pass but this person says let us go serve other gods meaning that now go mix this con concoction and rub it on your skin or don't have sex with Justin for the next three days or don't take a bath for the next three days or flip your bed over seven times and what was once the head of the bed make it the foot of the bed or get a glass of water and put it on your table and read this certain psalm every morning when people are telling you these things which are rituals and ceremonies of witchcraft which is literally tying you to altars or conjuring up spirits then yes your prophecy may be true but the Bible says now that you're leading me or directing me to another God I must dismiss you altogether so the Bible says in verse 2 of Deuteronomy 13 he says and the sign of the wonder come to pass wherefore he spake unto, unto thee saying let us go after other gods which thou hast not known and let us serve them listen to verse 3 he says, thou shalt not hearken unto him. Don't listen unto the words of the prophet. You hear what he said? Though even the part of the prophecy that was true, he said, don't you listen to him. You need to, dis but, but you're saying, but Kevin is true though. Yes, it's true. We cannot change that fact. But he says, because it's coming from this guy who obviously is serving another God, but using his gift to entice you to believe him to entice you to be tied to his altar that you have no knowledge of see that's that's what he's saying to you he says thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dream of dreams for the lord your god proved you to know whether you love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul so god says i can see right now who you love more let me see if you love prophet kevin or prophet james more than you love me because i already told you the rules so if you so caught up on he was so accurate and not looking at the second part that he's now advising you to do something that is contrary to my laws then obviously you love him more than you love god almighty so you can break this baby down watch this now i can read it again verse three let just read it again thou shalt not hearken unto the words plural he didn't say do not hearken unto him in terms of don't go serve another God everything he said to you even though it was true don't listen to him he says do not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dream of dreams for the Lord your God is now proving you listen to this now to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul listen to verse 4 you or ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him don't be caught up because he said XYZ and XYZ came to pass. He said, do not allow that to be the final evidence for you. Listen, listen to what he's saying. If the guy is now telling you, now that I give you that word, I need you to put a thousand dollar seed for what? Now that I gave you that word, I need you to go and buy me a Lexus for what? 
Now that I gave you that word that you said yourself was accurate, I need you to go take every dollar of your bank account and I need you to come bring it at the altar and God says he's going to give you more. Uh-uh, uh-uh. What? Give me a reference in the Bible where Amos, where uh, Nahum, where Abraham, where Isaac, where Jesus, where any of the disciples did this. Show me a pattern and maybe I'll believe you. Get from where you think this is. No. Yes, what you said was true, sir. But I'm going according to the principle of the word of God. And it says, if you now begin to venture in an area where it's leading me to another God. No, you didn't say, let's go serve Buddha. No, you didn't say, let's go serve Confucius. No, you didn't let's say, let's go serve some Hindu God. No, you didn't say that. But what you're asking me to do is the rituals and the ceremonies that are performed for those gods that will tie me to the altars of those gods. Oh boy, don't you play with me. You get a dollar from me. So verse 4 of Deuteronomy 13 says, Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And you shall serve him and listen and cleave unto him. Listen to verse 5. And this is how serious God was about these prophets who were altering the destiny of his people. Verse 5 now, and that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. Uh-huh. But you all better thank God for the New Testament, you know. These false prophets better thank God for the New Testament. Because you see, God was dealing with the physical man here. Take him out. Why? Because when a person gives you a prophecy, they're dealing with your destiny. So if the prophecy is not true, it's either going to delay you, it's going to hinder you, it's going to set you back or even kill you. Listen what he says here now. And the prophet or the dream of dreams shall be put to death because he had spoken to turn you, listen now, to turn you away from the Lord your God. So that's why he said in verse 2, yes, the prophecy came to pass. But if he's advising you to do something that is contrary to the laws, the principles, and the rules of God, verse 5 is telling me, in essence, he's pulling me away from the God of Abraham, from the God of Isaac, from the God of Elijah. So I don't want nothing to do with you, nigga. No. No. I want nothing to do with you. Because you are setting me up. But you're using your gift. You're using the ability that God has given you to lure me into a trap. So I will be so caught up on the prophecy. Oh, this prophecy was so on point. This was so on target. But now you telling me, let's go sacrifice chickens and goats. And let's go beat drums and dance around some stones. Uh-uh. No. No. Years ago when I had no sense... When I was spiritually retarded, you could have pulled that, but you can't pull that no more. Guess what I did? I did what you never advised me to do, and I went and studied the word. And the word does not coincide with what you're telling me. So get, get away. And the prophet or that dream of verse 5 shall be put to death because he had spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeem you out of the house of bondage. To trust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. The midst of thee. So this scripture is clearly showing you. You will not finish. That the purpose of these people. They have the ability, sorry, to use their talent. Remember the Bible says, you know, I think it's first or second Corinthians 11 and 29, somewhere around there. He says that the gifts of God are without repentance. Listen, my gift is I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher of the word of God. According to that scripture I just quoted, God, the Bible is saying, I didn't have to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior to, to, to teach the word of God. In fact, I'll tell you a story. I think I told you this before. Before I accepted Jesus Christ, because I was always knowledgeable about the Bible as it relates to my upbringing. I grew up with both grandparents who kept me in church. I didn't have a choice there. But I was always good at understanding and relaying the word to other people. For some reason, I just could have done that, which was my gift. 
Now, I live my sinful life in my early years. I party, fornicate, lie, do all those things. But when it came to talking about the word of God, boy, look here, I would run circles around the average preacher. And I was a sinner. So you see, my gift was an inhibit because I wasn't a Christian. So this is why the scripture, the Lord, the rule, the principle says that the gifts of God are without repentance. I don't have to accept Jesus. I don't even have to have a relationship with Jesus to exercise my gift. We see it every day. We see Whitney Houston. We see Elvis Presley. We see all of these secular pre singers whose gift was singing. But of course, they sang for secular whatever. So as you can see, your gift don't that's why the scripture is telling us don't be caught up on the accuracy of the prophecy don't be caught up on the gift don't say oh my god he's always on point he's always on target let's see what this brother is doing afterwards what is he advising why is he telling all of us to bring bottles of water to church huh why is he putting water in, in these little spray cans and spraying it in our mouth and saying this is the holy spirit why can't we see any scripture where Jesus had a bottle and spray and stuff and say the Holy Spirit in the spring. No, that's not of God. What it is is the water from his altars, from the water spirits. And now you got all of this receiving of the spirit and don't even realize it. All they're looking for is your agreement. And this is what you don't know. So you're agreeing to take on this foolishness. They're prophesying stuff that you know is not true. But part of it was true. And you so concerned about the prophet, you don't want him to make, make him look bad in front of everybody. So you accept it. The Lord is showing me that there's a pain in your leg. You know there's no pain in your leg, but watch dumb you. You receive it. Oh, yes, prophet. Yes, prophetess. You know it's not true. But what he said before that was true. He said, I see where you're having marital problems. Oh, 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 oh that's so true. Oh, that's so true. So you don't want to prove the prophet to be wrong now. So the prophet said, yeah, God is showing me there's a pain in your left side. And, 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 and it's, oh, yes. You know, it's, but watch what you're doing. You're missing the spiritual implication and the principle. You, you, this person have decreed a thing. You agreed by accepting it. So if it wasn't there before, you can have it now. That's why I say to you, take this moment. Father, whatever I receive from any prophet or prophetess that was not of you or that they said was false, but I received because I didn't want to be uh, disrespectful to the prophet father I repent I renounce myself any spiritual or verbal agreement that I would have made knowingly or unknowingly with that particular prophet dreamer prophetess whatever father I sever it in the realm of the spirit I renounce it I reject it and disassociate myself from all of the curses the hexes and the spells and the hardship the backwardness the delays that comes along with it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right? My body is running low here. So let's go to my final scripture. And I want you to go because I'm going to show you that these people, if they're not operating by their true gifts, which they do have for true, then they're operating by a demonic spirit. So let's quickly go here to the book of Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. And we're going to begin at verse 16. I got 5% on my, my iPad here. So I got to make this quick, okay? Acts chapter 16 verse 16 okay now what I just told you about previously was a true prophet a true prophet of the true gift of prophecy but because of their greed for money or dabbling in witchcraft they're using their God-given gift what he's not going to take from them and now lure you in setting a trap to now surrender you to their altars but I'm about to tell you now about another scenario but this time this person does not have the gift of prophecy what they do though they have a spirit an evil spirit that is aiding them through the process called divination so there's a familiar spirit that you cannot hear they can hear it and the process for them to hear spiritually what the spirit is saying is called divination they are being they're having access to the spiritual word from a demonic perspective and they know this this familiar spirit know things about the familiar spirit on your life so they're communicating and now conveying the message to you. So that will make them look like a true prophet. So in Acts 16, and we're going to read from verse 16 uh, to verse uh, 19. So listen to this now. Acts 16, beginning at verse 16, says, And it came to pass, as we went to pray, a certain damsel possessed, listen to this, 
possessed with a spirit, circle this now, a spirit of divination. The mere fact that they use the prefix spirit before divination clearly tells you you cannot see this thing on this person. A spirit of divination, okay? The Greek word for this divination is called python, all right? So this lady was possessed by a spirit of divination. She met with us. With, sorry, let me start from the beginning. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by suit saying. Suit saying meaning that she is an oracle decreeing divine revelations of the future. Oh, God is showing me that someone is going to die in your family. I see where you're coming into some money. So the Bible says that this spirit through the process of divination is giving this person who don't have the gift of prophecy the ability to now predict. Now most of what she's going to predict is lies but a lot of what she's going to say is true. And she's going to say something true here to Paul. Listen to verse 17. It says the same, meaning the lady, the same followed Paul and us and cried out, meaning this is what she's saying. She's screaming out. She says, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which showed unto us the way of salvation. So what she is saying is correct. What she is saying is true. And she is now telling the world, these are men of God. So that will even make her look good. That she can even recognize the true men and women of God. So the world, the, those who are around who are ignorant to spiritual laws, rules, and principles will automatically label her. This, this is a woman of God, man. For her to see that Paul them is really men of God, she, she on point. This is the verse 18. And this did she many days. Every day she'd been doing this, declaring who they were. But Paul, being grief, turned and said, I love this. Listen to this carefully. Don't let's read it fast. Paul turned and said to the damsel or to the woman, no, no. He addressed who? The spirit of divination. So you see why I tell you thank God for the New Testament? Because we just read in Deuteronomy uh, chapter, uh, what that was again? Chapter 13, where in verse 5, they were advised to kill the physical prophet. Well, you all better thank God for Jesus. You all know good prophets. You all better thank God for grace. So the Bible is saying, don't attack the woman, attack the spirit. So the Bible is clear here. It says, and this verse 18, and this did she many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, command thee in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And he came out the same hour. So when the spirit came out, listen to what verse 19 says. And when her master saw that the hope of her, of their gain was gone they cannot benefit from the spirit anymore the spirit that was on her that they put there obviously so that the spirit could speak to her and communicate for example whatever everyone have a familiar spirit on them whether you realize it or not that is recording every moment of you that knows your whole lineage so when that familiar spirit which are most which are not most but all false prophets and that spirit will say and they only know stuff that you have spoken or they have a history of. And they said, okay, Kevin, Kevin come from a, a family of divorce. So the prophet said, man of God, come here. The Lord is showing me that you come from a, ba oh, oh, hallelujah. You come from a background of divorce. So you'd be like, oh, wow, yeah, hey, that's true, wow. And he's showing me that your, your, your mother was divorced, uh, you were divorced, your brothers are divorced, your aunt, oh, and the Lord is showing me that your grandmother was divorced. So you're thinking, this guy is on point. My Lord. The Lord is also showing me that you just retired. And, 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 and God said to tell you that he's preparing you. So this person who don't have the gift of prophecy, but is being controlled by a spirit, a sword saving spirit, meaning that the spirit is using this vessel, this person, to now predict or to decree things, most of it untrue, but a lot of it is true. But unfortunately, people are going to take the small bits of what is true and dismiss the untruth in their mind and conclude that this is a prophet of God. So I'm showing you here 
where in the New Testament it's not asking us to kill the false prophet, all right? It's not asking us to do that. What it's asking us to do, like Paul demonstrated, you come against the spirit. So that's what you do. So if they call you up, you don't have to be rude, say in your heart, Father God, if this is not of you, I bring confusion to this false prophet spirit right now. I bring confusion to the spirit that's in this false prophet right now. Don't let them speak. And if they start to speak, you begin to come against it. Father, whatever they're speaking in the realm of the spirit or even verbally as it relates to my life, whether it's true or not, I come against it with the blood of Jesus. I bind this demonic tongue. I bind this python spirit. I come against this deceptive spirit in the name of Jesus. The only thing I would receive right now is what the true and living God has ordained over my life before the foundation of the world, according to Ephesians 1 verses 3 and 4. So you got to shut that down. You don't be no puppet to these people. Especially right afterwards they're asking you for money or asking you to go mix a concoction or asking you to engage in some kind of ritual or ceremony. They're trying to dedicate you to their gods. That's what they're doing. So my time is up right now. I got to go. All right? Father, but I bless your people. I thank you for sparing my life and that of my family. I cover everyone under the sound of my voice, but more importantly, every evil word that was spoken over their lives through demonic prophecies, I command it to be dissolved by the fire of God in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that God is a consuming and an eternal flame of fire. Lord, let your fire dissolve, break, annihilate, uh, and, and, and dismember every evil word spoken over anyone who has placed their hand over those that are listening to me right now and decree things that were even true but it never came from you in terms of the vessel father just like you said in your word in deuteronomy 13 father you said to obey none of the words that the false prophet says do not listen so we dismiss it now in the name of jesus christ we command those words to fall to the ground and never proceed any further or take shape in their lives in the name of Jesus. Instead, Lord, reinstate them to your original plan that they were derailed from through the intervention of the false prophecies over their lives. I plead the blood of Jesus over them now. That that cloud of darkness, that that deceptive prophet spoke over their lives. Father, I also pray right now for those who don't realize it, but when they gave their monies to their, those false prophets, they agreed, they didn't notice, but they agreed with the spirit of poverty to enter their lives. That is why they cannot keep no monies in their pocket. That is why every time they're trying to save for something, something pop up and knock every savings out of the window. So Lord, we break the spirit of poverty for those that gave to false prophets. Those who were uh, enticed by enticing words, by these deceitful, conniving men and women. I break the spirit of poverty. I break the spirit of confusion. I break the spirit of backwardness and every other spirit that has inhabited their lives because they agreed to what these false, conniving, deceitful men and women have spiritually done to their lives. I break the agreement that was forged between them and those demonic false prophets and those false dreamers in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we bless you. Father God, we honor you, we praise you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, folks, that's me. I'll make my plea once again before I leave. Like I said to you, as you can see, I'm doing fine. My family is fine. Many of you reached out asking if we need anything because of the hurricane. We don't need anything. Everything that we're collecting financially, we're taking families to the grocery stores, to the wholesale place, and tell them to pick up whatever they need and to make sure we're meeting 